This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. Democrats need to flip 23 seats to take control of the House, but Republicans may be able to hold on to the Senate. A Russian fighter jet intercepts a U.S. Navy plane over the Black Sea. And a Los Angeles coroner says rapper Mac Miller died from mixing a series of different drugs. Hello, and welcome to Matador News. I'm Angela Bickman. And I'm Joy Domai. President Trump remains hopeful that Republicans will still be in control of the House and Senate come tomorrow morning. But pollsters are telling another story. Early predictions say Democrats will easily capture the 23 seats needed to regain control of the House. The race of the Senate has early predictions of favor of Republicans controlling 52 seats. But throughout the country, Democrats are trying to flip red states, including Arizona, Florida, and Indiana. After polls close tonight, if two of these crucial races result in the loss of two Democrats, then Republicans will easily take the Senate. One rising political star Democrat, Beto O'Rourke, is trying to change the his historically red state of Texas to purple. Though polls are favoring Ted Cruz, the race is extremely tight, with only a six-point difference. O'Rourke is hoping for the young vote. So grateful to, to all these first-time voters who are going to decide this election. Voting amongst those 18 to 29 is up 500 percent. If O'Rourke and Tennessee Democrat Phil Betson win their states, Democrats would then take the Senate. On the minds of the voters heading to the polls are topics including health care, immigration, and the Me Too movement. And of course, Trump. Trump has said on midterm campaign trails that it is really him on the ticket. Civil rights groups f fear that millions of Americans, the majority are being minorities, are going to be denied their right to vote today. This issue has been prominent in Georgia, where Democratic candidate Stacey Abrams is running to become the country's first black female governor. She is running against Republican candidate Brian Kemp, who is Georgia's Secretary of State. Kemp is being accused of limiting access for minority voters in order to get more votes. In return, Kemp is accusing Democrats of trying to hack Georgia's voter registration files. Both Abrams and Kemp are defending their strategies. I'm doing my job. This is how we would handle any investigation when something like this comes up. Instead of owning up to it, taking responsibility, and seeking a way to fix the flaw, he instead decided to blame Democrats. The polls are showing a close race between these two Georgia candidates. In North Dakota, a judge denied Native Americans living in reservations the ability to vote if they cannot provide a residential address. So activists have scrambled to find addresses for people. In California, the polls are open today from 7 a.m. to 8 tonight. As long as voters are in line by 8, they will be allowed to cast their vote. Anyone who is voting by mail and doesn't think their ballot will arrive within the three days of the election are encouraged to bring their ballots to the nearest voting poll location. Los Angeles Metro trains and buses are offering free rides all day today in an effort to increase voter turnout. And in some areas, Uber and Lyft are offering free and discounted rides in the polls today. If any California voters run into a problem while trying to vote, they can call the state toll-free voter hotline for help by dialing 1-800-345-8683. That's 1-800-345-VOTE. Now here's Coraima Hurtado in the newsroom with the latest on voting here in Northridge. A lot of experts are saying millennials may be the key to these elections. Polling places near CSUN were still empty this morning, but that did not mean CSUN students will not be voting. The 2016 elections did not have a big turnout in the millennial vote. But after the results, many young voters say they felt the need to take charge and make the change. And just the times that we're living in now, and the president that we have, like, I feel like it just matters because I feel like last time um, a lot of people didn't vote and like didn't really take it seriously and now they see like the results. We need to exercise all of our rights as much as possible and this is a very important one to me. I know a lot of people say, oh my vote doesn't count, but really in, in a, it does, you know. If a bunch of people say that their vote doesn't count so they don't vote, that's really going to make an impact. 
Polls are open until 8 this evening, and as long as you're in line by 8, you will get a chance to vote. Now let's go back to Joy in the studio with some more international news. U.S. defense officials say a U.S. Navy reconnaissance aircraft was intercepted by a Russian fighter jet on Monday. The aircraft was flying in international airspace over the Black Sea when this interaction occurred. The Russian jet passed at high speeds directly in front of the U.S. aircraft, um, creating turbulence. The jet then made a second pass on the aircraft and applied its afterburner while conducting a banking maneuver. Officials have not been able to estimate how close the interaction was, but attributed the flight behavior to the Russians in making the encounter unsafe. A mysterious cigar-shaped object spotted tumbling through our solar system last year may have been an alien spacecraft sent to investigate Earth, or so say two researchers from Harvard. The object, nicknamed Oumuamua, meaning messenger that reaches out from the distant past, may be a new class of interstellar objects. Researchers first calling it a comet and then an asteroid, before recently deciding to classify it as the first of its kind. Astronomers thought the rapidly moving object originated in our solar system, but so far there is no obvious origin. Mass graves containing the remains of thousands of bodies have been found in areas formerly controlled by ISIS. The UN's Director of Human Rights, Suki Nagra, says over 200 mass graves were discovered in Iraq. The report highlights the legacy of ISIL's relentless campaign of terror and violence and the victims' continued calls for truth and justice. The grave sites, which may contain up to 12,000 bodies, were found in the southern, the northern and western Iraqi provinces. The smallest grave sites found in West Mosul contain eight corpses, and the largest, which is Kosfi's sinkhole south of Mosul, may contain up to 4,000 bodies. The UN is calling on the international community to provide assistance with the exhumations, identification of victims, and the return of remains to families. Now here's Veronica Bariga for more business news. Thank you, Angela. Insiders say Amazon will split its headquarters between two different cities, but the company hasn't officially made an announcement. Insiders say Amazon will choose New York City and Crystal City, Virginia. The news came as a surprise to many in the business world. Over 238 cities and counties had submitted bids to the retail giant in hopes of gaining its business. Amazon says the move will bring up to 50,000 jobs to the two cities. Those employees will make an average pay of more than 100,000 a year over the next 10 to 15 years. In September, Amazon stock was valued at just over $1 trillion. Markets are open today on Election Day. At last check, the Dow is up about 106 points. Right now, the most popular stocks are Apple, Citigroup, General Electric, and Google. Netflix and Facebook are experiencing a decline. The Nasdaq is also up at about 18 points. Are you a student in need of financial mentoring? The CSUN Peer Financial Mentoring Program offers workshops. Let's go to Studio B with Gloria Alas with more information. Thank you, Veronica. Yes, I have CSUN's peer financial mentor, Andrea Gamis Garcia here, who is going to give us the scoop. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about uh, the program. So the program, um, the peer financial mentors, what basically we do is we help advise students on any sort of questions that they have over like their finances. We do uh, like scholarship advising. Um, so we just help them look for stuff that they uh, require at the moment to help them get through school. Will the students need um, to disclose their credit score with the program? Um, no. They can disclose whatever they feel most comfortable with us. Um, so they don't have to disclose their credit unless they want to help improve it. Um, but other than that, I mean, if they have questions about savings and credit cards and anything in that sort of area, uh, we will just help create a solution for that. Okay, and what kind of uh, scholarships, I'm sorry, not scholarships, what kind of programs do you guys offer? Like workshops or? Um, yeah, so we definitely offer workshops and free one-on-one -on -one sessions. Okay. Uh, but the workshops cover budgeting, um, student loans, how to pay those back, uh, services that you can find to help guide you through that, um, and like identity theft, credit cards. Awesome, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being with us today, Thank you Andrea, for having me. Of course. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's go back to the studio with Justin Vigil with the latest health. The American Academy of Pediatrics has updated its policy on spanking. The doctor's group had called spanking ineffective and say it can affect a child's brain development. The AAP also claims spanking does not improve behavior over time. Potentially, it can even cause more disruptive behavior in children. They recommend instead rewarding your children for positive behavior, as even words can even be harmful if the child feels shamed or humiliated. Marijuana stocks can skyrocket in Michigan if Michigan votes yes on its ballots. The vote is to legalize recreational use in both Michigan and North Dakota. Utah and Missouri are also voting to legalize marijuana, but for medical purposes only. You would need to be 21 years of age to be approved. Once approved, consumers are granted permission to grow up to 12 marijuana plants for personal consumption. The laws could change several current violations from crimes to civil infractions. And now back to Veronica with more entertainment news. The toxicology report for rapper and producer Mac Miller says he died of an accidental overdose. Officials say he had a mix of cocaine, fentanyl, and alcohol in his system. The report also says the rapper's body was found in a praying position on his bed. Miller, who had a history of substance abuse, died in September at the age of 26. His music started with mixtapes in his hometown of Pittsburgh. He would later go on to become the first independent artist to top the Billboard charts in more than 16 years. Idris Elba is people's sexiest man alive. Elba says the news came as a shock because growing up he was picked on for being tall and skinny and having a funny name. The star also says the magazine cover has been an ego booster for him. Elba tweeted about the news telling fans he, had, he is honored and thankful. He also urged everyone to go out and vote in the midterm elections. Alba's breakout role was as a drug king, as a drug kingpin, rather, in HBO's The Wire. More recently, he starred in Marvel's Thor and alongside Kate Winslet in the drama A Mountain Between Us. Here's Matador reporter Demothy Tian with student reactions to The Sexiest Man Alive. Thanks, Veronica. Some CSUN students don't necessarily care about the sexiest man alive, while others had their own suggestions. Well, I personally don't know him. I have never seen his movies or seen him. I mean, he's not a bad looking guy. He's actually quite handsome. I don't necessarily pay too much attention to who's sexy and who's not sexy. When, it's, when women or men are voted sexy, um, no sexy people, <laughs> um, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, they're attractive. Maybe there are other options as well, probably. Like Noah Centineo, probably. <laughs> Personally, I think The Rock should have gotten the title, but to each his own. Now back to Justin with the latest in sports. In the NFL, the last undefeated team has finally fallen. The Rams made the trip south to face the high-flying New Orleans Saints, who had won six straight games coming into the matchup. Tied at 14, the Saints would begin to pull away from L.A. in the second quarter. Quarterback Drew Brees fakes the handoff to Alvin Kamara and hits tight end Ben Watson for a go-ahead touchdown. The Saints would not let up as Kamara again waltzed into the end zone for his third touchdown of the game. The Saints would lead by 18 at the half. The Rams would answer in the third quarter. A scrambling Jared Goff would hit wideout Malcolm Brown, who somehow tiptoes his way into the end zone for six. After another Rams field goal, LA's defense held their own to give the offense another chance. Goff would then find Cooper Cup for the receiver's sixth touchdown of the year to tie the game at 35. After the Saints kicked a field goal, Taft of Woodland Hills grad Michael Thomas would score to defeat the previously unbeaten Rams. Thomas, after his touchdown, would pay tribute to retired Saints Pro Bowler Joe Horn by celebrating with a flip phone. Thomas said he hid flip phones under both goalposts to ensure his tribute to Horn. The Rams and Saints now each have one loss and are on top of the, are on top of the NFC as the one and two seeds. Gymnast Simone Biles was in excruciating pain during this weekend's World Championships in Qatar. The four-time Olympic gold medalist competed through kidney stones, but even that couldn't stop her. Biles helped lead Team USA win its fourth straight world title by 8.766 points, the largest margin of victory ever at World Championships. Biles wouldn't stop there. She would go on to win six medals, becoming the first woman in 31 years to medal in every event. The Texas native now holds the record for most world titles in gymnastics history. And a new era in CSUN men's basketball begins tonight at home when the Matadors take on the New Mexico Lobos. 
The Matadors will be led by head coach Mark Gottfried and assistants, former NBA star Mo Williams and former UCLA head coach Jim Herrick, who gave Gottfried his first coaching job. Jim hired me and then you know, he promoted me two different times on his staff and he showed great confidence in me. So, you know, throughout the years, we've always stayed in touch. Uh, we've competed against each other. CSUN will be led by last season's Big West Freshman of the Year, Terrell Gomez, expected to be a high school. My whole life, me being able to shoot the ball like I do so well, many coaches have tried to put me off the ball because I can help a team and, you know, really spread the floor. Um, so I understand it. I can score the ball really well. And those guys, you know, they, they give me the ball pretty well also. So I, I agree with it. The Matadors are hoping to improve on last season's 6-24 and record. Tip-off for tonight's game uh, tips off at 7 o'clock. Cool temperatures are approaching this week. Solomon Ladvinka has more. It's going to be uh, 74 degrees out here today. Upper 70s and low 80s are to be expected throughout this weekend. Now, if you have plans to go out elsewhere this weekend, I definitely recommend coming to my neck of the woods, say in Pasadena, where three to five mile an hour winds are to be expected. Same thing with the beach. If you want to go to the beach, I suggest Long Beach, only because those same three, five, three to five mile an hour winds are going to carry over as well. Makes for a nice swell, as well one of my personal favorites, flying those kites. So if you have plans to go out throughout the rest of Southern California, I definitely recommend going into downtown LA, say Whittier, Southgate, Downey. Expect to bring out that sunscreen because though it's November here in California, it's still summertime like weather. Back to you guys in the studio. Democratic campaign workers in Virginia got a big surprise on Monday when former President Barack Obama bought donuts for the staff. Obama came to encourage the Fairfax County volunteers. The former Dem Democratic president came in support of Senator Tim Kaine and con congressional candidate Jennifer Wexton. The former president has made multiple stops, including Atlanta, to campaign for Stacey Abrams, who is running to become the first female African-American governor. Thank you for watching Matador News, and don't forget to vote by 8 p.m. tonight. Every vote counts. I'm Joey Domayi. I'm Angela Bickman. I'm Veronica Briga. And I'm Justin V. Hill.